In this video, we'll be looking at how to dilute a concentrated acid. The materials that we'll need are deionized water, the acid, a volumetric flask, a graduated cylinder, a small beaker, and a Nalgene bottle to store it in. We'll remove the cap from our acid and be sure and set the cap top side down and then carefully pour some of our concentrated acid into the beaker. We'll pour slowly to avoid splashes. When we have a small amount, we'll put our bottle down and return the cap to our container of acid. Now that we have our acid in the beaker, we'll use a graduated cylinder to measure the exact amount that we need. And so we'll take our beaker of acid and we will pour it very slowly into the graduated cylinder. Again, slow pours avoid having splashes and accidents. And we'll simply add it slowly until we get the desired amount of acid. And once we have the correct amount, we'll make sure that we tap the spout of the beaker to remove any excess acid. Now that we have our acid in the graduated cylinder, we need to dilute it but first, we'll add water to our volumetric flask. It's important to add the water to the flask first, because when we mix concentrated acid with water, we will generate a significant amount of heat that could cause the acid to splatter if we were to do this in the wrong order. So first we add the water, and it's usually easiest when we've got a large amount to unscrew the cap to pour the water into the volumetric flask. Now that we have our flask half filled with water, we can now add our concentrated acid and the water will act as a heat sink preventing a splatter from occurring. And now the only thing left for us to do is to dilute our acid to the correct volume. And we're going to dilute it by adding water until the volume reaches the mark on the volumetric glassware. When we have a lot of water to add, it's still helpful to unscrew the cap and just pour it in. As the flask fills with water, we'll approach the mark relatively quickly. And depending on the size of the flask and how much water, as you near the end, it may be advantageous to add the cap back to the wash bottle and squeeze it to add the water in slowly through the nozzle as opposed to pouring it in from the lid like we're doing here. Now, we want to, again, make sure that we don't overshoot the mark for it. So as we get closer, we're going to add the water more and more slowly maybe even drop-wise if we're going to do it by the bottle. Once we're done, recap our bottle, and we're almost finished. The last item that we have to do in our checklist is to add the diluted acid into its Nalgene bottle. So I'll uncap the bottle, and now we're going to be pouring it in. And we'll go slowly at first. Again, we want to avoid spills at all costs. And as we still have a relatively large amount of acid that's in the flask, you can see that it doesn't pour out smoothly, but it kind of comes in waves. And now that we've gotten a significant amount of our acid into the bottle, we won't have air bubbles to worry about, and we can pour much more smoothly, and we can also pour faster at this point. Now, if you're concerned that maybe you were going to splash it, one of the things you could do is use a funnel to pour it in and help you. And that's fine. You just have to make sure we don't overfill the funnel. And so now we have almost all of our acid into the Nalgene container. And there we go. We've added all of our acid to the Nalgene bottle. And now we'll cap the bottle. And the very last thing we need to do is to label the bottle with the concentration and formula of the solution that's in there. So this will be 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. And that is how we prepare a diluted acid solution.